Hi everyone, it's Coach Fred, and today I'm going to be talking about the sine function. So we've been working on trigonometric functions and equations and expressions. Um, so today we're going to learn about their graphs. So the first one I'm going to be looking at, so this is video number one of the graphs, is the sine function. But in order to do that, you've already learned the unit circle, and we spent a lot of time trying to understand the values of the quadrantal angles, the coordinate points at the quadrantal an angles. So let's go ahead and fill in this chart. So um, I'm going to have you, again, draw just the coordinate grid for yourself and maybe label our quadrantals, okay, and um, put our coordinate points. So 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Okay, now remember positive direction is going to go counterclockwise negative direction is going to go clockwise. So I'm going to ask you to take a pause, so pause the, the, the um, video, and fill in the chart. See what you can do. Um, and then come back and we'll check. All right, so you're back. And hopefully you've got a lot of ones and zeros, but take a second and check your work. I put them in different colors so that you could see them clearly. Um, we're going to need these for the graphs. Now, we did investigate the graphs in class with Desmos, and um, you guys saw some really interesting things. But let's now look at the graph, okay? So um, we're going to look at what we're going to call two periods of the graph. And I'm going to define that in a little bit. But for now, we need to recognize that the unit circle has four different quadrants, right? And they're all symmetrical. So the graph is going to have, in each period, it's going to have four symmetrical sections, we'll call them, okay? So along the x-axis is where we put our radians or degrees. Degrees could be used as well, but we want four equal sections. So let's go ahead and do that on both sides. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, and so we would label the x-axis pi over two, our quadrantals, pi, three pi over two, and 2 pi. And so on the opposite, you know, on the negative side of the x-axis, we would have negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative 2 pi. Now, we want to also just remember, you don't need them for these general graphs, but when we translate the graphs, we are going to have to recognize that like within pi over 2, there's going to be 1, 2, 3 um, pieces. There's going to be 3 between pi. There's going to be 3 between, and there's more than that, but if you're thinking about the unit circle, remember we've got pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, so each one is going to have those values um, in there. Okay, so for the sine graph, what we're going to do then is on our y-axis, we know that the unit circle only goes up as high as 1 and negative 1. Okay, so we're going to use the quadrantal points to help us graph the function. So I'm going to start at 0. So the sine of 0 is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. The sine of pi is 0. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and the sine of 2 pi is 0. Now remember, we said this it's the sine wave because it is a wave, and we use this when we're... Um, Anything that has vibrations or um, or waves of any kind, so like when they're radio waves or even waves of the ocean, so oceanography, they can use trig. All right, so negative pi over 2, the sine is negative 1, and then back up to 0, and then up to 1, and then back to 0. And so I'm going to try and make my wave... Nice pretty wave. It's hard to do. Now, remember, it's going to go on, and it's just going to keep repeating, and that's the sine graph. We just showed what we'd like to call two periods of the sine graph. That means that the graph goes through a complete cycle twice on this graph that I just showed you. Okay, so we're going to actually define some new language that we use with the sine graph or with all of our trig graphs, okay? First, let's go through what I think you know. You know that domain, if you look at it and it keeps going on and on, is negative infinity to infinity. And the range, because it only goes up to 1, down is negative 1, would be from negative 1 to 1. It does exist at those values because it has the value of 1. But today we're going to look at what we call the period and the amplitude. Okay, So amplitude, if you like, look it up, it says the definition is the max extent 
of a vibration or oscillating measure from the equilibrium. That's just a crazy definition. So really your amplitude is half the distance, half the distance from the max on the curve to the min on the curve or the wave. So you can see the max here is one, the min here is negative one, that distance is two, half of that is one, so this has an amplitude of one. Okay, a the period, we talked about the fact that these are called periodic functions. The period is the length of one complete cycle. Now when we measure this, um, we start like starting at zero. It goes through one, down up. It goes through like one turn around the unit circle into pi, and then it's going to start to repeat. So the period of the basic sine graph of the parent graph would be two pi. So again, it's like how long it takes for one uh, cycle of the graph before it starts to repeat will occur. All right, guys. So that's your information on the sine graph because next week we're going to be translating this graph. Okay. All right. Hopefully that was helpful. Have a great day.